Okay. So, as you approach the Rattling Town, you're ambushed by a group of well-armed humans. The leader demands you hand over the package that you've been asked to deliver, claiming it was stolen from her group. She offers no reward, but promises a swift death. Do not offer up the package. Wow, you suck. They do look kind of tough, but that's okay. I'm kind of expecting f death and failure here. So let's burn advance. Stone barrier her. And we have a pinning shot. Well, let's lose double strike and swipe. Uh, let's see, lose the other swipe. I'm gonna hold on to flame fan, but let's do pinning shot on one of these guys. The closer one. Then defensive stance. Then I'm going to advance a little bit. Okay, so they're not coming for me. I mean, that works. Let's lose... Wait. Prepare. Extra willpower. So let's lose block. Let's lose adrenaline. Let's lose stab. Cross bolt on that guy. I don't know what shield does. X reduce movement and all damage dealt. Okay, so we're going to lose the defense anyway. So the question is, do we go for... Lose range damage three. Oh. I don't have quite enough. So do we do prepare or power shot? I'm going to just have her prepare. We could do the power shot, but then we lose the headshot. So I'm just going to wait. So what does fatigue do? It passes uh, too slow. Or it passed too fast. Uh, fatigue is just a, a spent card. A wasted card. Okay, so we have Wild Swing. Does a bunch of damage. We have Headshot. We've got a couple of things. So let's burn her cards. So I have run, wild swing, tackle. Oh, interesting. Can't get her right there. I'm not sure why. Let's get rid of... No, let's let's get rid of tackle. If I do flame fan, I can set that guy on fire. Okay, let's burn advance run and hit him with a power shot. And that loses their willpower. Okay. I would have liked to kill this guy on this turn, but he was in the way. Owie! Well, he's on fire. It works. Okay, so we've got Clash. Ooh. Let's burn Wild String. Swing. Move her forward. Burn the swipe. Hit him with a Clash. Should help a lot. Okay, let's burn that. Can we do Chaos Missiles? Do Chaos Missiles. Burn Advance. Do Chaos Missiles again. Burn Headshot. And swipe him for two. Okay, leaving this one last guy. Very wounded. We did take a lot of damage there. But it seems like he's mostly focused on staying alive, maybe? Okay, well, we don't have much, so 
I guess I'm just gonna move him forward. We're just gonna swipe him. There we go. Problem solved. We did take some damage there. We took a bunch. Hello. Battle reward, though. And we can level up one character. Gonna level him. Take aim. All ranged attacks deal extra damage. Exposed all enemies for ranged attack three. If you are adjacent to an obstacle, defend four. Let's do cover shot instead of power shot. After defeating the bandits, you quickly look for the closest rattling in a uniform and ask for an audience with the Praetor. You're escorted to a large three-story building with the top floor and roof almost completely gone. Inside, a small rattling female greets Rastin and apologizes that her master is not available for a meeting presently, but she's happy to complete your transaction. She offers you a choice of obsidian or precious clean water and food. Food. After collecting your reward, the party is quickly dismissed and ushered back out onto the street. Okay, we can also buy and sell. So, let's sell the bow, let's sell the armor. Oh, I want to hold on to that. The more food I can hoard, the better. We seem to get a decent amount of gear, and gear offers interesting stats in this. There is the forged metal that might have been interesting, but eh. Up ahead, you see a line of humans chained together. There are two rattling slavers this time around. Well, ambush them. Crouching, moving swiftly to corner the two uh, to the corner of two boulders ahead of the column, you remain undetected by the guards. Rastin creeps towards the rear of the column and takes the guard out with a stand stab in the back, covering his mouth as he falls. But Rastin trips and is spotted by the front guard, who lets out an alarm call. Rattling guards appear from behind a bridge, and you must fight to free the slaves. So, how many do we fight? Two. That's not bad. Okay, there's long shot, which we want to we want to use and abuse. Let's lose tackle, defend. Flame fan. It's good, but it's not that good. No matter what, long shot. Six damage, six damage. And if I burn the advance, we should be able to cover shot this guy for the rest of the way. Okay, and we can do defensive stance, or we just wait. Now let's burn the prepare and use a defensive stance. Yeah, long shot is absolutely worthwhile. Okay, that's a little close for comfort, but that's okay. Uh, let's burn prepare. Move him closer. Burn that. Burn that. We want to do... Stop. We want to do clash. And then we want to burn... Crossbolt and Chaos Missiles for Double Strike. Flawless victory. Well, that's not so bad. I like the uh, the placement on the field. I think that's a really well handled... A really good way of handling this. I wish instead of replacing our old class skills... I mean, some of them are kind of nice. But I really wish we'd actually get like little passive perks here and there. That adds to a lot of replayability, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, some of these, like Measured Blow, for example, are, are great. Okay, it transpires that the Burly Slave is a blacksmith. Asked to join your group. Sure. So weaponsmithing is cheaper. We haven't found any recipes, though, so I don't know if I can do that. There's also something questionable down there. Oh, I gotta check it out. Whatever it is. Ball woods. Oh, interesting. So there's different regions. Okay. Uh, we've got plenty of food, but still. A number of unusual clumps of vegetation lie ahead. Each comprises a circular grassy clump about a foot high. Which smells up pleasantly fresh and fragrant. Rastlin recognizes a meadow, meadow sweet, an edible herb used to stop bleeding and tweets, uh, tweet, treat swellings. In the center of each clump is a bare earth with a curious spiral pattern, narrowing it as it reaches the center. You're not sure if this is a natural feature? Okay, let's dig into the earth and check it out. Rastin sticks a weapon in the earth, but it 
As he does, something beneath the surface grabs hold of it. Rastin tries to wrestle the weapon free, but whatever he's up against is surprisingly strong. With gritted teeth, he heaves the weapon out. With such force, he ends up slicing his hand. Okay, so he has hurt himself. So you've been injured. You can heal all of your heroes slowly by resting in a sheltered location using the bed down. Or drag, and, drag a healing herb to them. So Rastin got injured. Is it an actual injury or is he just hurt? It doesn't necessarily say. Well, let's head over here. We've got two towns to stop at, maybe. Okay. So we do have a book. Shockwave? Nah. Okay. While exploring the settlement, Jura is confronted by a dirty human, possibly in her teens. She is desperate for food and offers to sell the party information in exchange for a small amount of obsidian. She claims that she and her father, a hunter, recently discovered an unlooted elven temple in a nearby forest. They took what they could carry and made their way back to the settlement. However, they were unluckily robbed by hybrid bandits and her father was killed. She has been living on her own ever since. Sure, money. Girl thanks you for the generosity and quickly provides Jar with directions to a crudely drawn and a crudely drawn map to the nearby forest. Okay, so first and foremost, we are going to rest. We have no injuries to heal. We do have crafting. So I could actually make a light weapon. But none of it's good. Now I could keep resting. Well, let's not. I don't have a whole lot of food or time. I'm just going to head for that elven temple. I'm probably going to lose here. But that's kind of normal. Oh. There we go. Uh, let's see. Path ahead opens out to a wide, curiously flat clearing. Makes you wonder what lies beneath, so you kick away some of the dirt. To your surprise, just a few inches below the surface is a pale, polished surface. Concealed underneath sprawling ivy, a short distance away is a wide stone basin that backs up to an old stone wall. Find two statues of elves standing next to each other. One is carrying a vessel of water from which a pipe emerges, and the other holds a intricately shaped shield that looks like a falling autumn leaf. In the days of the living world, this might have been a beautiful fountain. Try and remove the shield. Okay, Jara strikes the shield with as much force as she can muster, hoping it will break free. For astonishment, the weapon bounces back and they feel a terrible pain shoot up their arm. Feels as though an elfish enchantment is protecting the sight. Ow. So let's go to this one first, and then we'll go for the other one. Following the directions given to you, you find the temple hidden within the dying forest. As promised, the temple appears largely undamaged. You approach cautiously. As you approach, a group of rattling stress in black drop from the trees. Their leader laughs at your gullibility in being sent to such a remote location to die. Clearly been set up and must fight to defend yourselves. Oh. Aurora Storm. Oh, boy. Okay. So I'm going to have her advance, her defend. Let's lose block. We're going to use Chaos Missiles. Use Chaos Missiles. Doesn't do much. We're going to have him defend. Do that. We're going to do a power shot on... Actually, we probably want to do a cover shot on either of them. Actually, let's burn power shot. Stop. Move here. That way we get cover shot. And I can slam a one of these guys and get a bunch of extra shields. That seems reasonable. They kind of want to just tank up here. Well, so far, not so bad. Ow. Never mind. That freaking hurt. Okay.
We're gonna have her burn swipe. I can't do anything. Oh, good. We have him advance? Maybe. The problem is we need to do damage to some of these guys. And that sucks a bit. Well, I'm gonna have her move there. We're gonna burn Cantrip and Frostbolt. I'm gonna have him advance here. Let's stop. Focus. That's range damage. That's not super helpful. Oh, and she didn't help that one. Oh, and she is exposed. We might actually lose her. Okay, so let's lose focus. Let's lose stab. Move her closer. Flash on that guy. And we actually don't have enough for anything more. Well, this is going poorly for every for me mostly. I'm not sure why I didn't well, she's dead. I'm not sure why I didn't get the Oh, that's probably an injury. Plus you willpower at the start of your turn. Okay. So let's do swipe. Kill that guy. Burn long shot. Move closer. Get rid of adrenaline. Actually, do I do I care? Let's do a measured blow. And I'm gonna just defend. For no good reason. So this is going bad for obvi obvious reasons. I I gotta figure out how the combo skills work. Because they don't seem to be working the way I think they work. Let's do... What do we got? Swipe. Melee attack. So I could do the swipe, but I don't think that would work. I've got plenty of energy, so let's do... Do I? I'm going to play Adrenaline. And then we're going to... Mm-mm. Burn prepare. Double strike. Okay, so that guy's dead. Move that, move there. But yeah, we got nothing. Okay. And then he's gonna defend. And he's gonna swipe him. So we'll be a we'll live. Burn defensive stance for a wild swing. Okay, let's burn power shot, move backwards, burn defend uh, for pinning shot. That'll kill him. Okay, so do we get an in injury or something? Broken leg. Injury is a permanent addition to your hero's core deck that can only be removed through special encounters. Okay, take all. We'll level her up. Let's grab Draining Strike instead of Swipe. Okay, with rat with the Rattling Ambushers defeated, you go about exploring the temple, but quickly find that it has been picked clean of anything usable. All right, so we're going to rest because we're tired and very wounded. Rest again for a little bit of extra HP. Go a little bit more. Okay, and let's go for our, our objective. You find the remains of the elven palace that is still partly suspended in the treetops. From the markings, you are sure that this is the place you are looking for. The water stone must be near. You find what appears to be some sort of carriage on a cable that runs up the treetops. With no power, the carriage is useless, but the party slowly shimmies up the damage cable towards the main part of the palace. When you finally reach the top, Melkin notices that there are some active elemental lights in the building ahead. She signals for the rest of the party to be silent. It soon becomes, soon becomes clear that the palace is not deserted. Rastin hears a voice from inside, and there are shadows moving in the elemental lights. 
Party cautiously approaches, but unwittingly triggers the security system. Lights quickly come on, illuminating the whole party, and a quick inhuman wail sounds the inside it sounds inside the structure. You're soon confronted by a large rattling figure who screams at you for trespassing on her claim. She insists the elven technology is for the rattling people only. Soon become soon becomes obvious that she is hostile, and you will not get through without a fight. Okay, so what do we got? We've got long shot. Burn these. So she's back there. Two defenses at the start of every turn for every other enemy unit. Okay, so we want to just bammo that guy. Can I can I burn broken leg? Hilariously enough, I can. Okay, I gotta move him down one. Let's burn the defend. Long shot. Okay. Do we have anything else? No. So let's wait. Okay, defensive stance. Well, let's burn wild swing. And defensive stance. Burn these two. We could do cover shot. Alternatively, I can do frost bolt. For the ice. We're gonna wanna keep clash. Now let's burn that. Burn flame fan. Do a cover shot on her. The more damage I can do to the boss, the better. Hopefully, well, she'll absolutely get more defense for Clash. Hopefully I don't have to make a return trip. That would suck. Okay, so adrenaline might not be a bad idea. Let's burn swipe. No, stay there. Okay, so we want to defend, cantrip, prepare. Many of these would be helpful. We have a lot of prepares, so let's burn that. Let's do clash. Let's burn defend. Burn willpower. Get Prepare. Burn. Prepare. No pinning shot. Burn adrenaline. We'll do pinning shot on that guy. So he's at least stuck. Okay. Kind of dicey. So let's burn... These two, they're mostly useless. Let's give her some extra shield. Let's run closer. I probably should have actually tackled. Eh. Move down there. So, gonna do power shot on that one. And then I can do block... Let's just do block. Not much I can do here. But the boss is, is on their own now. And I can really start just wailing on her. Never mind. Advance. There, that sucks. Defend up. I really don't have much else I can do, is there? Well, we can... Go, we can save for focus. Let's lose these two. Advance her over here. Burn. Power shot. Move him up a little bit. I don't know where they're escaping to. But we might as well pop our powers. 
Okay, and we don't have any more fire. We have a boss. We have clash, but they have nothing more. Let's do stab and clash. Do a measured blow. They lose willpower. We advance. Okay, so we can see from there, and that gets us either long shot or headshot. We can also do frostbolt. But we should probably do the stone barrier. Because he's gonna die. Arguably. Let's burn headshot, long shot, and hit her with the frostbolt. Because apparently frostbolt ignores all cover. So I didn't actually need to move her at all. Okay. So let's run. We've got cover shots. Let's burn, prepare, and swing for a cover shot. No, didn't work. Move there. Cover shot on her. And we've got a swipe or a wild swing. Let's burn everything I've got. And bet on the wild swing, rolling slightly above average. Perfect. Dicey, but it works. Okay, so we take all. Do we get another cover shot, a shot, or do we do another take aim? I'm gonna do another take aim. Oh, they all leveled up. Okay, hamstring resilience. Ooh, resilience is pretty good. Let's get that instead of just a regular defend. And overload. Every time you play a card that deals magic damage, this power gains plus one damage. Or Windwalk. Let's grab Windwalk instead of Advance. Okay, you go about thoroughly searching the Elven Rune and find the Waterstone. It was once a garden terrace. The artifact is unfortunately completely inert and would be completely useless in its current state. Further exploration of the palace turns up what could be a solution. The gem can apparently be powered by a scry pool. A powerful elemental device that the elves once used to give power to their devices. Fortunately, you can find no trace of such a pool in the palace. It was either destroyed when the building collapsed to the ground, it was never there in the first place. After some research in, in an intact records room, you discover that there was a network of sun temples that had been marked for some ritual before the cataclysm. Each of these temples would have a scry pool, and you're able to pinpoint the location of one temple a few days' travel from here. Quickly decide this is your next destination, secure the water stone in a padded pack before deciding to leave. Oh, we also get some supplies. Good, we needed all of that. Okay, so I'm gonna preemptively heal her. We have enough food to go f go with, so that's good. Oh, so we have three objectives that we're to work from here. Okay. Sith the merchant greets another rattling merchant with a tail shake, a warm rattling salutation. It seems that a collection of rattling items and curiosities will be on sale in a nearby human town. While there is unlikely to be any weaponry, armor, or anything usable, it may yield a few useful items. Sith mentions that she might be of some use to ascertain the true value of the goods on offer. He tells you that he is familiar with the, the tricks of the trade, winking at you and smiling. He hints that he used to be something of an unscrupulous trader in the past, but was taken to task by a rattling fighter, whom she sold some armor of... Huh. What gender? Because it's he and she. Alright, whatever. Probably she. Uh, sold some armor of highly dubious quality. She tells you she was surrounded and forced to wear the questionable armor she had sold while a female rattling fighter swung a blade at her chest to prove how ineffective the armor was. She shows you a thick, dark scar starting just under her neck. Accept the advice. Okay, let's rest while we're here. Okay, you see the remains of a giant column. The base is formed of... Many neatly arranged stone blocks, but the top surface is a small, messy mound of honey-colored bricks. You think you can see something glinting in the gap between the two bricks. You're trying to dislodge one brick, but to your surprise, it falls into some kind of cavity. It's only when you hear a loud splooshing sound a few seconds later that you realize it's actually an ancient well, not a column. Clear way around, uh, you clear away the mound of bricks from the top. They're resting on two large wooden beams, which span the diameter of the well. 
and cross in the center. Beneath is a remarkably well-preserved rope and metal bucket attached to the pulley. In order to lower the bucket, though, you must climb down to the wooden beams. Lower the bucket, see if there's fresh water. Malkin tentatively places her feet on the beams. They don't seem to move, so she begins to lower the bucket. Without warning, the left beam gives way completely and Malkin tumbles into the deep well. She tries to grab the bucket on the way past, but also comes loose from the rope. Malkin slows her descent painfully by bracing against the shaft of the well, but soon hits the wet ground below with a nasty crack. It takes a few hours of the rest of the party to help her back up the shaft with what remains of the rope dangling from the frame above, and she broke her leg again. Okay, you enter a human settlement. There's a human man up ahead addressing the crowd of people with uh, with various battled old wooden trunks behind him, presumably the goods to be sold. Various items are bought and well at well over under the odds. Sith informs you. Towards the end of the auction, a very large, partly broken earthenware jug is wheeled out along with a pair of weighing scales without the accompanying weights. Sith whispers that both of these are a good buy, which is somewhat surprising given they look utterly worthless. Bid for the scales... Seeing no one wants it, you put in a 10 obsidian bid, which the auctioneer accepts immediately. So this set of weights are ready, but not weighing scales, so this is a very sensible acquisition for ascertaining the value of gemstones and precious metals. 20% better prices when buying and selling. You leave the cobbled square outside the tavern, and rather conveniently, you spot a market ahead. Okay, so we gotta buy these. We've got some garb garbage. Deal two damage and inflict shock to two different random enemy targets. That's actually kind of good. All ranged attacks deal plus one damage. Ooh, that's really good. Okay. We found a legendary item. As well as providing skill cards, legendary items will give a hero a permanent combat bonus when equipped. Be careful, as they come with a disadvantage. Okay. So this is for him. Can I equip both? There's no disadvantage to it that I can see. Let's go back to her. Give her double strike. The regular stab was kind of nice, but not that amazing. Okay. And what is this? Flame fan. No, I'd rather have call lightning. She really should never be near anything. The frostbolt, driving cold. Okay. These are good. So let's go back here and sell the lot of this stuff. It looks like there's a number of kind of interesting items here, but I'm probably too poor for any of it. I do really wish the equipment had more interesting abilities. Like, the plus one range damage is kind of neat, but I think that's like one of the only things I've seen so far that actually has such an effect. I find myself mildly pining for the, the interesting effects and combos that you can get in Slay the Spire. Or the the fun combo, like, cross-character combos from SteamWorld Quest. You know, playing both of those kind of has made me very picky about my trading card game sometimes.